thank you for joining me today. A friend and I went out to purchase a table recently for her house and this was part of the deal. She had four seats and then this. It does actually come with feet but in order to get it to my house we had to take the feet off. What she wants me to do is replace the inside back and the outside back. So let's get on with it. All I'm going to do is start removing the double piping that's here. There's a staple there, so it has been stapled in. So I'm going to take this off and then take the rest of the cover off. It's just going to take a while. I'll just make my way around. This is the fabric that is going on that kitchen bench. It's a velvet, it's tram lined. Considering it is a velvet, it's not too firm. This is the inside back. They have a seam all the way up. When I looked at it at first, I thought the pattern kind of went out that way, but in fact, it is seamed to match all the way up to the top. So I am not going to put a seam in the center. I'm just gonna fold this over and make a pattern from here. Having folded that, the raw edges together and across, where the seam is here is the center. I'll put that on the center fold there. The trouble with this end, when I've got my raw edges together there and straighten it out, the center of the pattern is not on the center seam, it's slightly over. I'm going to line it up with this fold and then straighten everything out. I am going to overcut it so it's really not a problem that I've done that. Check that my patterns are equal. Take here and here, that's even. The selvages at the bottom are even as well. I'm going to lay that out. Having got that, I'm going to go up the side here. It gives me a nice couple of inches to be working with. I'm going to cut that distance all the way around. So if I need to put a center seam in to adjust anything, I've got the movement there on up. Before I move this off anywhere, I'm going to put my cut in here so I know where to take it to. I have on this side cut the fabric about an inch and a half shorter. It's folded up to about here which is quite a bit of wastage. I've laid this out, but looking at this, I think it's gonna go in quite nicely without having that seam. So all I've got to do is measure out, and make sure that the center is in the center here. I was a little bit worried because of the center seam. So I'm gonna work my center marks out first. Because of the velvet, it's, it keeps getting caught up on the foam here. So I've put two plastic bags across the back. The plastic should allow this to slide evenly without getting caught up. Pull this back over the top so I can see where I'm going to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this down like this in between the plastic and the leather. There we go. That's making it a bit easier. It's just to stop the friction. Something I have learned over the years is this isn't always in the center. So I'm going to measure from here to there, which is 25 inches from there to there, <laughs> which is 25 inches takes me to there, which means that isn't in the center. The center is slightly over. When I pull the fabric down from in here, I just gotta make sure that that's, oh my goodness, that it's where it needs to be. And as long as I leave the plastic in place, I should be able to pull this across. So I'm gonna put the center mark here and I'm going to find the center mark here. I see this comes this way. That doesn't mean to say that that's the center. I'll measure it and mark it. The center came to about here, so I've measured out two inches either side. It's not exact, but it's close enough. I've moved these over so that this line here comes just inside here, and this line here comes just inside there. I think that's about where the center should be. And start stapling this up so it's nice and even to make it look straight on the other side. And once I've got the pattern repeat where I want it, it'll be fine. I've put little clips in. I'm going to push the fabric across under there, and there's not really a line to follow, unfortunately. I should say there is lines to follow, it's just that they don't seem to follow from across as easily as sometimes. If you've got a pattern to follow, then do that. I'm trying to make sure that this is at least a finger width above, but that's not quite perfect. Pull that down and across. On this part, I do actually have a bit of a line to follow. I'll try to line this line up and then 
again across across and up like that i finish working into this corner coming into this side and i need it to be as far down as i possibly can I put my fingers down here what they did was they put the back in and then they put the front on so i'm going to pull this up a little bit and cut the fabric just the fabric cutting in at this side is really difficult so i'm just going to put a snippet here just a little one and hopefully i'll be able to pull the fabric out to the side here that's what i'm hoping for i pull this from the other side or try to i should say into place it's just a little bit more turn that in underneath that to the side and then it's really awkward to get to they really didn't do it in an easy way for redoing this project oh push it down pull it up pull it across this is a real bind that should take me into that corner now down into there and then up so i'm going to work this little corner in make sure it looks even and then i'll pull it out to the side i think that's probably it that's closer and now I'll work this into position all the way across. I have the center marked here. Pull that over the top like that. Just a little bit. Fold like that because it's quite a long run. I'm going to just cut along this row of weave a little way. And hopefully that will line up. And I'll just pull that over. Make sure that does line up. There we go. And secure. So I'm going to bring that down and across and attach that side down and across and bring that line in sort of out all the way on either side until this back roll has been pulled in i'm not going to take it too high because i've got another row of fabric to go on and i also need to bring this up and secure that in place too i was going to secure this then this but i'm going to do it the way it had been done mainly because this foam has been glued onto this so i don't want to ruin the, the way it goes in before i pull all of it in i'm just pulling it over like this and into the side and working it in the reason is if i pull it in too much and any of this is caught under i won't get it into place so the whole idea is you get everything where you think you need it it to where you do need it well i do have the center little section in i'm going to work out and out and then i'll pull the sides in i've pulled it up and into place from the front here i'm going to push it this way but when i pull it in i'm kind of bringing it back here just so that it's nice even roll the good thing about being a little bit underneath here is i can see how smooth that is going to turn out out and in. Now I'll work the other side into more or less the same area and then I'll pull all the way from the front over the top. So it's going to be little sections before it's all in. But I think if I do it in little sections it'll go in quite nicely. Again I folded the centre to match there and there. Pulled it out with the selvages matching at the bottom and I'll make sure that's the same all the way up. Now this is the outside back. It is slightly shaped and I'm gonna make sure the center runs up the center here. I have plenty of room and I'm just gonna cut along the top here. I've given it a bit extra, but that won't matter all the way across. I won't need a reminder of which way the fabric goes up because the selvage is at the bottom. I'm going to make the piping up. So I've folded this over so I can get a nice angle. I've decided to do the piping on the bias because then I'm not going to waste anything because originally I thought I'd do it on the striped part of the fabric but I realised that if I do it on that then I've got all this area that's not being used which is a waste whereas if I go across like this I get a bit of everything and I think that will look quite neat. I'm going to cut strips up at two and a quarter inches it's a bit wider than I usually do. The cover that I've just removed is actually two inches but I think if I do it two and a quarter I'll get a really good cover out of this. I've cut several up because there's, there's one piece that goes behind the roll and then the piece that goes all the way around. I've just put all my lengths of piping together. I've made sure that the velvet part is going down on all of them. Here's some piping. It's a narrow piping. It actually came out of the original 
double piping. I'm going to fold that over like that. Although I'm doing double piping, I'm doing it singularly because the fabric is different thicknesses and I just want to keep, I think I'll put less of a turn on there. There, it's about a quarter of an inch, I think. Pop that back under. Lengthen the stitch to the longest length. I don't often do it this way. I usually do it all in one go. But I don't want them swapping over and make my way down. As I get closer to my join, cut that and I'm going to cut this back to within a quarter of an inch of my seam. Open seam up and flatten it out a little bit. Lay that across there for now. We will alter it in a minute. I think it's folded over so I'm just going to pop this under here and push the top back underneath the foot. There we go. Push the piping into the fold of the fabric and then work on down. Cut it back to about a quarter of an inch from the stitch line all the way along. It's an awkward way to do it, but I really wanted this to stay as even as possible. There's the top of the original piece of piping, so I'm going to put that in there like that, roll it over and slot it into place. I'm just going to keep it as tight as I can all the way down, like this. When I say tight as I can, I really mean that into its fold there. This is going in better than I thought it would. Open that up and lay that down. Fold that over it and pinch it so it stays open. I've centered the back, made it as even as I can to the base. And along here at the top, it's centered. I'm going to start stapling it across the bottom. Pull it this way towards this side. Even it out. And again, just a little bit. I'll do the same the other way too. Along the top, fold this under like that and pull it towards the top so it's up under here and then down into the corners here on the outside. Put some staples along the top. Go this way and then I'll go the other way. I've cut back here, I have been stapled that in and I also cut this back so it's nice and neat and I'm just going to seal the bottom here like this and then, trying not to get this everywhere, I'm going to put that on here, quite a thick piece and I'm just going to feed this down as far as I can into position and then bring it across and in to hold the fabric. Once that's done, pull the back of that chair out a little bit. Now that's in position, I'm just going to put glue across there and kind of angle it in slightly so that the raw edge is always caught underneath. A little length like that, angle it and into place. I'm going to make my way all the way around this like that until it's all in position. I think it's going to look pretty neat with it done on the bias. Thank you for joining me on this project. It was a real workout getting this in so I did use polythene just so that I could manoeuvre the fabric against the foam. I did take the polythene out because nobody wants to be sitting listening to crap and I think she will be absolutely thrilled with it. If you want to see more from me please subscribe, hit the bell button and a few thumbs up would be brilliant. And in the meantime, take care. See you later. Ciao.